I first heard Peaches and Regalia by Frank Zappa soon after it was released in 1970 on his jaw-droppingly brilliant LP, Hot Rats. As a 17-year-old, I was stunned. I'd never heard anything with such unusual instrumentation, time signatures, and just plain interesting music. Zappa pushed his boundaries constantly. His comment on rock journalists was typical. Rock journalism is people who can't write, interviewing people who can't talk, in order to provide articles for people who can't read. Am I alone in admiring Zappa? The answer is no. If John Lennon is to be believed in a memorable Rolling Stone interview, he said, well, Zappa's a genius, but he's a intellectual, isn't he? At around the time that Zappa recorded Hot Rats, he recorded Weasel's Rip My Flesh, Chunga's Revenge, Burnt Winnie Sandwich. It was a consistency he was never to achieve again. Frank Zappa was born in Baltimore, Maryland in, on December the 21st, 1940. His father was of Greek Arab descent and his mother was three quarters Italian and one quarter French. Zappa grew up by avant-garde composers such as Varese, Igor Stravinsky and Anton Webern. He was also influenced by rhythm and blues and doo-wop groups and modern jazz. His own ethnic background and our diverse social and cultural mix in and around Greater Los Angeles were crucial in the formation of Zappa as a practitioner of underground music and of his later distrustful and openly critical attitude towards mainstream social, political and musical movements. He frequently lampooned musical fads like psychedelia, rock opera and disco. Zappa left home aged 19 and soon staged a concert of his orchestral music in 1963 and to broadcast and record it. He appeared on the Steve Allen show the same year in which he played a bicycle as a musical instrument. Doc Records rejected him for having no commercial potential, a quote Zappa later used on the sleeve of Freak Out. The Mother's Invention and a studio orchestra recorded the groundbreaking double album Freak Out. It mixed rhythm and blues, doo-wop and experimental sound collages that captured the freak subculture of Los Angeles at the time. The album immediately established Zappa as a radical new voice in rock music, providing an antidote to the relentless consumer culture of America. The sound was raw, but the arrangements were sophisticated. Some of the session musicians were shocked that they should read from charts with Zappa conducting them, as this was not standard at a rock recording. The lyrics praised non-conformity disparaged authorities and had Dadaist elements. Zappa moved into a house in Laurel Canyon and, became, and it became a meeting and living place for many LA musicians and groupers of the time. Despite Zappa's disapproval of their drug use, he labelled people on drugs as assholes in action and he only tried marijuana a few times without any pleasure. He was, however, a regular tobacco smoker for most of his life and strongly critical of the anti-tobacco campaign. We're Only In It For The Money, released in 1968, was produced by Zappa and featured some of the most creative audio editing and production yet heard in pop music. And the songs ruthlessly satirised the hippie and flower power phenomena. The cover, the cover photo parodied that of the Beatles' Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. After he disbanded the Mother's Invention, Zappa released the acclaimed solo album, Hot Rats. It features, for the first time on record, Zappa playing extended guitar solos. It was backed by jazz, blues and R&B players. It became a popular album in England and had a major influence on the development of the jazz rock fusion genre. While performing at the Casino de Montreux in Switzerland, the mother's equipment was destroyed when a flare set off by an audience member started a fire that burned down the casino. The fire was seen from across the lake by members of Deep Purple who were inspired to write the classic rock track, Smoke on the Water. Zappa continued a high rate of production through the first half of the 1970s, including the solo album Apostrophe, which reached a career high number 10 on the Billboard pop album charts, helped by the chart single, Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, 
because that's where the Huskies go. In 1981, Zappa also released three instrumental albums, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar Some More, and The Return of Son of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, which was inspired by something an audience member shouted to Zappa during a concert. The albums focus exclusively on Frank Zappa as a guitar soloist, and the tracks are predominantly live recordings from 1979 to 80. They highlight Zappa's improvisational skills with beautiful performances by the backing group as well. Most of Zappa's projects came to a halt in 1990 when he was diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer. The disease had been developing unnoticed for 10 years and was considered inoperable. After his diagnosis, Zappa devoted most of his energy to modern orchestral and synclaver works. Frank Zappa died on Saturday the 4th of December 1993 in his home, surrounded by his wife and children. At a private ceremony the following day, Zappa was interred in an unmarked grave in Los Angeles. On Monday December the 6th, his family publicly announced that composer Frank Zappa left for his final tour just before 6pm on Saturday. I was fortunate in being able to put my name to a worldwide email to his wife Gail thanking Frank for the way in which his music had reached out to so many of us in different ways. In 2005, the US National Recording Preservation Board included Rony and the Money in the National Recording Registry as Frank Zappa's innovative and iconoclastic album represents a unique political stance, both anti-conservative and anti-counterculture, and features a scathing satire on hippiedom and America's reaction to it. The same year, Rolling Stone magazine ranked him 71 on its list of 100 greatest artists of all time. I can only say it certainly influenced one 17-year-old living in Bristol in the United Kingdom. Could rest you, Frank.